McCullin, which is a documentary um, portrait of the photographer who na- made his name travelling to areas in the world where the most terrible things were going on, war, famine, strife, and photographing levels of human suffering that most of us would find unimaginable. The documentary intercuts a modern-day interview with Don McCullin, with um, an interview uh, that he did on The Parkinson Show and uh, interviews with his newspaper mentor and, of course, significantly, McCullin's photographs himself. He started out shooting sort of teddy boys and gangs um, in London. He talks about Finsbury Park. He says at one point, he says, I thought I'd never escape from Finsbury Park. Do you know what Finsbury Park is backwards? Park Frins- Finsbury? Crappy rub sniff. Um, which is the famous thing that everybody knows when you go into Finsbury Park on a train and you come in and there's trying to... Anyway, I can tell go. you about an anagram for Newark, but... No, let's, let's, yeah. not, let's not even go there. Um, and so he, he, he came to the attention of newspaper editors with these photographs you know, taken around London. Then he took himself out to Berlin where he was in exactly the right point at the time that the wall was going up, therefore made a name for himself as a news photographer and was there, from there on, was sent to various war zones where... He talks, and he talks very, very honestly in the film. The interesting thing about uh, McCullen is, well, you're going to hear a, a clip in just a moment, is that he, he talks constantly about the idea that he, that he didn't come from an educated background. He came from quite a tough background. And he speaks with complete honesty, but with none of the obfuscation or um, verbosity uh, that's, you know, that, that some people, I mean, arguably me, would use. He talks very straight, very honestly, and in, in a way which is really quite remarkable because he's inc- very, very smart and constantly questioning himself, questioning his own desire to go to these places to photograph this stuff. I mean, he talks about the need to go to the war zones. He talks about sometimes, the, you know, the adventure of it. Of course, he ended up getting shot at and getting shot, getting wounded. And... All the time in the documentary, there's this question about whether he has the right to be there, whether there is an element of tourism about what he's doing. And I think this relates slightly to the conversation that we were having about uh, about the impossible, that what is his position as somebody who is there watching all this horrible stuff happening around him and talking about it very honestly. Anyway, here's a clip from McCullen. You just said it's a, it's a rotten job, and yet you have, in fact sort it out. You sort out war and, and, and famine and, and, and misery in all the time I've known you, which has been a long, long time. Yes, but I did it because I thought it was just going to be soldiers. And then when I got to war, I mean, I, was, I thought it was amazingly kind of exciting to lay under a barrage of shells dropping on me or a sniper trying to get me. I thought, you know, I thought that was a challenge. And I've, I've swum around with many dead bodies in canals to get by them. And when the snipers were working a ridge for me, and I I, I thought, you know, I wanted to put my fingers up and say, you missed it, mate. And, you know, I had a very cocky attitude about um, warfare. But then I started coming in contact with the, the, the real victims. And they are always the poor people who are not informed. They don't have the Mercedes-Benz to get away. They don't have the communication or the money to move off quick. They are always the very poorest people who get clobbered. <coughs> and um, the amazing thing is, is that that was where I started in my life, living with poor people. And I, when I... And with them in those circumstances, I have a, a very close affinity and an understanding of what their lot is. You see what I mean about the way in which he talks? It's very, you know, it's very direct, it's very unfussy, it's constantly questioning his own role. Here's what's interesting about them. I mean, McCullen's story is is really fascinating and his photographs are extraordinary. He has that strange combination of, on the one hand, his technical skill, which seems to be completely um, you know, natural to me. He, he just, from the moment he picked up a camera, he seems to have understood and he thinks visually but he's also technically very very skillful and he also has a moral investigative purpose he's constantly questioning what you know what he's doing with these photographs and all the way through the documentary you think i can't think of anybody else who has that much visual skill that extraordinary level of experience and will speak this openly about it and says quite often i don't think my photographs have changed anything i don't think they've stopped anything i don't think they've although he talks later on about the fact that nowadays the people who are interested in his photographs are younger people people who are still outraged by the horror of war still outraged by the horror of famine still outraged by the horror of poverty he says that his feeling is that most other people have just come become slightly inured to it and there are images in this documentary that are shockingly distressing shockingly distressing to the point that you look away i mean not just his photographs but the news footage he's somebody who has looked seen the very very worst of humanity at some points we're actually watching this i thought i want actually what i want is herzog to be doing this documentary because you know we kind of joke about herzog but i do think herzog is somebody who has a, you know a genuine existential understanding of the world in all its strangeness and i would you know i'd love to hear 
Herzog investigating McCollin and them having a, a conversation in that way. Well, you're, the, back, you're back to the line about looking into the abyss. But that, that, no, but, I, but, but I'm it not, sounds as though uh, yes, that's but, exactly what he's done in this film. It's exactly that. The one slightly strange element about the film, though I understand this, I understand why. Don McCullen's family is a kind of absence in the film. They're referred to as my wife and my children. Um, and it's obvious that the film is interested in him and his work, and it, there seems to have been a sort of specific desire not to, to, to involve you know, other family members. This is interesting to me only because he was my next-door neighbour, and his son was my best friend when I was a kid, and I had some of the happiest times of my childhood staying with them in the in, in the house. I mean, originally they were next-door neighbours, then they moved away, and I was very, very good friends with his son. And so part of me, just from a personal level, wanted some of that, wanted some of that colour in the family life because his family, as I knew them back then, it was a very long time ago, so I'm not claiming any personal knowledge now, were fabulous, you know, and, I, and, and lovely people, and I wanted some of that. But the documentary makes an interesting decision, which is that they are very much on the side, and he does talk passingly about the fact that, you know, what he did in the end had it took its toll on it on his marriage and and he wanders about going away and leaving his family behind to go and see these things that are in the world and then coming back. And But that stuff is touched on very delicately and very sensitively and clearly a decision has been made by the documentary makers to do that. And I know nothing more about it than that. Uh, and I think as a portrait of him, therefore, it is, he is, an, I mean, I read his biography some time back. He is an extraordinary character. He's in a way, the thing that speaks most powerfully for him is his work. I mean, his photographs are, you know, there's a famous photograph of a, sh of a shell-shot soldier, which I remember being at college and a very good friend of mine, Charlie Baker, had on the wall. And it is the, the most extraordinary image of, of war. And it is just an image of a man's face. And then his, his going around the world looking, and he says at certain times in the documentary, I saw the worst of humanity. And he, he absolutely did. But he can talk about it in a way which is very constantly questioning and constantly strange. And and does he does he narrate it? Because the clip no, that we heard, that was just Parkinson. That was, that was an interview with Parkinson, yes. And of course, at that, at that point, when he was... Because he was fantastically handsome when he was you know, younger. I mean, maybe still now, but, you know, and he was a sort of a, a, bit, a, a bit of a star. Um, and he has that, that his voice is his voice is great to listen to. I mean, he is a very, he's a very interesting interview because he's slightly taciturn. And it's like he doesn't... Un he's completely the opposite of me in that he's a man of few words and he chooses his words, you know, his words, he, he says a lot with a little, whereas I think I do the opposite. Anyway, I found it a very fascinating documentary.